so I can understand why he didn't have the resources to get that upgrade any earlier. However, the Wehrmacht player does have Vet 1 on his infantry, which is something I'm also a very huge fan of. Yeah, especially with that, I think it's the uh, regenerative bonus that they get from Vet 1, but really if I was going to get veterancy, I would go and get Vet 2, or possibly Vet 3 now that it's, I think that Vet 3 gives you the heroic armor. Yes, it or does give the you the elite, elite armor. Yeah, the elite armor that was in Vet 2 in retail. But I mean, Vet 2 gives great bonuses, especially against vehicles, because elite armor does nothing to help against vehicles. But the Vet 2 bonus, which is now plus 20% health, I think, uh, that at least helps you out a little bit against vehicles and helps out with the splash damage. Yeah, and that's also on uh, support bit. Uh, <laughs> support veterancy as well so you can see mags and his pyro spam strategies that he loves to get that vet too because it makes his pioneers just indomitable exactly yeah and you can see that uh chains he's just dominated the map now he's pushed uh pushed blitz right back into his base yeah chains has been doing a pretty good job i don't agree with blitz's strategy of charging all of his infantry in in a blob and hoping the calliope miraculously misses them because he has two calliopes right now and it's it's just a really bad idea to blob against that but the tiger is on the field so this could be the point where blitz's entire game changes up and it is also interesting to see that uh that uh, chains. He's got his two Kalapi set up there, and he's just knocking the hell out of his uh, out of Blitz's base. And really, I could think he, well, mm, yeah, I reckon it is slightly bit kind of not useful. But seeing as Kalapi barrages are just so cheap that you can just fire them off all the time and not mm -hmm. worry about it. The only problem with having two calliopes and spamming the barrage is that that is 30 munitions every time both your calliopes fire and his muni income right now it is plus 48 but he does only have 55 in the bank right now and that means he doesn't have much available for field repairs however it is ticking up at a ridiculously fast rate but he doesn't really have anything to deal with this tiger he is getting an M10 but an M10 isn't exactly the best thing to counter a Tiger with. However, because the Tiger can't get vet anymore, it's actually fairly weak. It is. And you can just circle strafe of the M10, come in with the Calliopes, because they do have their main gun now, which is quite an interesting thing, I think, in, in uh, Company of Heroes Online. Definitely. It's fairly terrible for balance, in my opinion, but it is kind of fun, especially me being an armor player to have two calliopes that can just run in and destroy everything and then barrage on the supporting infantry just because they can. Oh, we've got the double barrage onto the tiger and you can see that that's actually doing quite a bit of damage to it and it's already down to half health just from that. No, down to a third health just from those two barrages. So a very good use of munitions. That was actually crazy. If half of the rockets hadn't hit this house, a little bit in front you see it's absolutely destroyed if half the rockets hadn't hit that house this tiger might have even gone down which is fairly insane from just two upgraded calliope barrages yeah and it's also interesting to see that uh, that uh, blitz he has got a uh, vet one for his tanks and as we all know that is a very beneficial upgrade and the m10 is coming in and he might actually get it those calliopes and the, and the M10, they're going to take down that Tiger. Yeah, there's no way this Tiger's going to survive. There we go, Instavet 2 on the M10, so that's going to give the M10 an increased speed. And I actually don't know what the Vet 2 bonus does, but I know the Vet 1 bonus is increased speed, so that's going to help it flank any future tanks and get out of danger. He doesn't need to repair it, however. Yeah, and also on the M10, uh, some of the M10 army items are... Uh, I think they're pretty good, like the increased turret traverse, I think, is one of them. <laughs> Another double Calliope barrage into the base, and that takes out the Vermont quarters. Austin goes down, I think that this is going to be a wrap for Blitz. 
Yeah, this is definitely going to be GG. Looking at Change's army right now, two Calliopes, two vetted M10s, four rifle squads. However, they are fairly low. However, he does have, I think he's wait, actually saving up for the Pershing. He's got 700. Nope, never mind. He just reinforced, so he's down to 600 manpower, but he's definitely going to be waiting for that Pershing just to finish off the game because Blitz really doesn't have much left. No, and that was quite a waste of munitions. He just fired down uh, a rocket barrage. It did damage the engine on that uh, on that uh, M10, but it's just popped field repairs, and I would suspect it's got uh, both uh, both uh, increased repair um, upgrades onto it. He actually does not have many field repair upgrades. If you notice the M10, he's actually only at like a quarter health right now, which if the field repairs was fully upgraded, that M10 would be at 100% by now. But the Rocket Barrage did seem like kind of a last ditch effort by Blitz. I think he knows he's lost this game. He's actually salvaging the, the Tiger for a bit of extra munitions, maybe try to drop one more Blitz Rocket Barrage before the game is over. Yeah, and another double Calliope barrage onto the onto the bunker, and it's probably not going to take it out. But also, I think that Blitz is going to try and do a, another last ditch effort. He is saving up for the heavy armor support again, but it's still got a 115 sec left on the cooldown. So I think by the time that that comes around, uh, Chains he's going to be right up in his face and probably in his base actually. Definitely. It's also important to note the VPs right now, which I actually hadn't been paying attention to until just a second ago. Only 135 left for chains, so he's going to have to... He is capping in the middle right now, but I don't even think he's been paying much attention to the VPs, and they've ticked down fairly low, and it's not exactly in his favor. He also hasn't gotten bars yet, which is weird considering he's floating 160 fuel. No, but he has got the second supply yard upgrade. And that's really essential if you're going into a heavy late game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he does have 261 manpower income right now, which is almost the rate you get manpower at at the very beginning of the game when you have only one engineer squad. That rate's 270. So it's definitely paying off for him at this point in the game and another Calliope Barrage going off in the base. Yeah, and the nail in the coffin has arrived. There's a Pershing on the field now as well. So definitely nothing that uh, that Blitz can do to counter that really, really, really tough armored force. Yep, and that looks like it's probably going to be game for Blitz. Kind of a tough match for him. I think going Tier 3 was a mistake, of course, when you're Blitz. You kind of want to go tier 3 because tier 2 is a little redundant considering you do have storms, but he just didn't have enough AT to prevent the first skilled Sherman from doing a lot of damage, and then it was just kind of a snowball after that, and he couldn't keep up with the American player's tech. No, especially as, as you said earlier, he was going around and harassing the rest of the map while his main force was attacking, and... That's really crucial in in a game. It just sort of throws you off. But we do have the second Tiger and the Austin on the field, but it's not going to be enough versus all this American armor. Yeah, we'll have to see if the Tiger actually manages to do anything, or if it gets instant instantly flanked by all of this Ameri all of these American tanks. And yeah, it's already down to almost half health. And. I predict once this Tiger goes down, we're going to see Blitz calling GG and tapping out of this match. Yeah, I'd say so. And here comes the, the last double Calliope barrage. And that wipes out the Ostwin and the N10. Uh, Ostwin and the Tiger, I should say. And most of his infantry. He's only down to three, uh, no, two uh, <laughs> Grenadiers. Literally only two. Yeah, and that was the good game. There we go. And if we look at the Calliope, I think I can still... Yep, I can still select it. But if we look at the one Calliope, 29 infantry kills, a light vehicle kill, and a tank kill. The other one, 15 infantry kills and 2 tank kills. So those Calliopes definitely paid for themselves over the course of this game. Yeah. And if it was retail, they would have been both at VIT 3, I would say. Oh, definitely. 
Now, on the note of veterancy, really, I've got a Blitz account, but I don't have Stormtroopers, so it means that, because I think that Stormtroopers now, they are slightly worse than uh, Grenadiers now, just because they have veterancy, and that really is crucial, because Storms, they, when they got vetted up in retail, you could really just pound face with them, especially doing those sneak attacks on M10s with double Shreks, and that was a, a really crucial uh, factor in armored engagements in retail. Yeah, I agree. I do think the Storms at this point in the game are better at harass- har- harassment and just popping up and killing, in, like capping infantry or lone tanks because they can move so much faster, but they're not as good as Vet 2... MP44 stormtroopers in retail at being a solid anti-infantry force, which is really a problem in my opinion. Agreed. So, uh, goods and bads. Uh, what? What's your opinion? Um, I think they just need to figure out a way to give Colin units veterancy back. But I know that means a lot of redesign and stuff like that, and it's probably not something we're going to see. So. I don't know. I assume we'll be seeing a patch within the next few weeks, and hopefully something will be addressed in that, but we'll just have to see. Okay. Uh, What did you like about this match? I quite like that it wasn't too hardcore. There was quite a good bit of micro near the end. There was a bit of floating, but can somewhat be forgivable uh, in the heat of a battle, I would say. Yeah, I thought Chains played fairly well. He did float a little bit, which it seems like a lot of games I've casted have involved players floating, which is interesting. But he did float a little bit. Blitz, I just think he teched incorrectly. I know he's Blitz, so he wanted to go Tier 3, but sometimes you just need to throw up Tier 2 and live with going a heavier Tier 2, especially when you haven't seen any sort of tech and your opponent's controlled the fuel for most of the game. So... I think with a little bit of better teching decisions, we could have seen an even better game than the entertaining game we saw just now. All right, so I think that is it is now time to wrap this up. So thank you, Inverse, for um, jumping in on the shoutcast with me. Uh, I'm Dero, and that was Inverse. <laughs> so I guess we're going to say goodbye, folks. Goodbye. Thank you for watching, and thank you for having me, Dero. Oh, no problem. And don't forget, you can check out uh, Inverse's video casts on his YouTube channel. And you can also see uh, online operations uh, on my YouTube channel. So what's your YouTube, YouTube channel, Inverse? YouTube.com slash InverseGR. It's, there's a thread on in Game Replay's general discussion that has a link. So you can just look for it there if you don't want to remember. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, you can also send uh, your replays to inversegr at gmail.com and also onlineoperationsgr at gmail.com. And I'm sure, Inverse, you'll be happy to uh, see uh, people's replays for your video casts. Definitely. All right, so that uh, wraps it up, I think. So, goodbye, everyone, and thank you all for watching.